In this video, we're going to show you how to configure the ESP32 as a web server. We'll start off by connecting it to the Arduino IDE, scanning for networks and connecting to Wi-Fi, and finally, once the web server is configured, switching some digital outputs on and off remotely over the Wi-Fi network. For this example, you'll need an ESP32 board, a breadboard, a couple of LEDs, and a jumper cable, and also a Wi-Fi network to connect to. In the Arduino IDE, you can first open the board manager and search for the ESP32 board. You'll see it can't be found. So if you go back to the Arduino preferences, you can paste in the URL for the additional board managers. You can find this URL in the description below. Go back to the board manager once this is done and search for the ESP32 board. You'll see that now it appears below. Click install to install the boards. And once this is complete, you're ready to connect to the board, compile and upload your sketches. You can see it's been installed there so I can close the boards manager. By going to tools, I can now see my board as an option. All the ESP32 dev boards are there from the different manufacturers. I'm going to go with the generic ESP32 dev module. But if you can find your one on the list, you're better off going for it. So now we can go to the example folders and you'll see Wi-Fi. And we can do a Wi-Fi scan to scan for the networks available in the area. So I'm going to compile and upload this sketch to my ESP32 board. Once that's ready, I'll open the serial monitor. Now I've just marked my own private network here in red, just so it's kept private. But you can see the available networks in the area. So I have a printer, a living room, and then my own network. And this, this script just um, scans over and over again until you close it. So that just says that it's working, that it's seeing the networks available. So now I'm going to go back to the examples and go for a web server. What the script does is essentially it connects to the network, giving the SSID and password of your choice. Again, I've made my own private in red, but my password is Kobe2018. Um, this script basically connects to the network, gets assigned an IP address from the DHCP server of the router, and then creates the server. So it hosts on an IP which it will specify, and then we should be able to access from a web browser. It's finished compiling and uploading there, so I'll open the serial monitor. Again, I've read it out the um, network it's connected to, but you can see the IP here. And we open up Google, Chrome, type in the IP address, and you can see, hello, you've successfully connected to the ESP. It says 8266 in this case, but obviously this example script is written for an ESP. A266, but it works perfect for the ESP32. Okay, so here is uh, another script that I've made. It's uh, a more advanced web server for controlling digital outputs. I'll share this with you in the description below. You can see it connects to the network with the SSID and password provided. And there's two outputs being controlled here, uh, output 15 and output 4. So just you can state them, declare them as off to start with. And I'm going to compile and upload the sketch to the board. And that's just working away now. So the same thing with this. Once it's uploaded and connected, we'll open up the serial monitor. It gives us the IP address for which we'll open it up in the web browser. And I can just reload that. And you can see the new web server there being hosted. So it's two buttons to control GPIO pins 15 and 4. And you can see the feedback to say that they're currently off. So now just before we test that, let's connect some LEDs to the pins so that we have something to control. First, I'm just going to draw this up in a fritzing. So I'm going to connect uh, the ground, the ground bar on a breadboard. I'm just going to turn that black.
Next, I'm going to insert my LED. Connecting it between pin 15 and the ground. There's a 3.3 volt output on the ESP32, so it's perfect for the LEDs. And I'm going to connect the second one between GPIO pin 4 and the ground. I'm just going to change that one to green also. Okay, now we're ready to do this in real life. So I have my ESP32 board on my breadboard. So now I'm going to connect the ground wire between the ground pin on the ESP32 to the ground bar on the breadboard. So you can see it there. Second, I'm going to get my LED, starting with the red LED on GPIO pin 15. So that's connecting between pin 15 and the ground bar on the breadboard. Just getting the second LED, the green one, ready. And that's going to go between GPIO pin 4 and the ground bar. Okay, so now back to the web server. And we can test it by clicking on the green button and changing the state from off to on. So there's GPIO 15, which is the red LED switching on. We can turn it off. And you can see it turning off. So let's look at them together. There's 15 on and 4 on. Off and off. Red on, green on, red off, green off, red on, green on, green off, red off. So that's working perfect. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and find many applications to use it for. You can switch on LEDs, read temperature values. The possibilities are endless. So this video has been brought to you by Mishmash Labs. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.